Hello Sagittarius, this is Citrina and this is your June 2018 horoscope. Okay, so we will start off with Mercury. Okay, Mercury is going to be in Gemini until the 12th of this month. Now, for you, Mercury in Gemini falls in your seventh house of partnerships. So, when Mercury is in Gemini, you tend to have scattered thinking. You tend to be detached emotionally. So, for you this month, Sagittarius, it looks like you might be a little detached from uh, your partner. As far as detached emotionally. You know, your partner might come to you and want to talk about some of their feelings and you really, until the 12th, you really won't want to uh, hear it, you know. You want to keep everything lighthearted. Because when Mercury is in Gemini, you tend to be able to take in a lot of knowledge, okay. But as far as having it sink in, that doesn't take place until Mercury goes into Cancer. So just watch out for that. I mean, you, you, are, you have this knowledge ahead of time. So try to act like you're listening to what your partner is saying, okay, when they come to you. If they come to you between the 1st and the 12th, try to try your best to um, really let them know that you are concerned about, you know, what they are talking about, okay. Now let's keep moving on. Mercury moves into Cancer. Okay. Mercury moves into Cancer on the 12th. Now, for you, Mercury moves into Cancer in your 8th house. Your 8th house is all about other people's money. It's about shared resources, things of that nature. So, maybe whatever your partner was talking to you about uh, at the beginning of the month, it will finally start sinking in for you. Okay? And then maybe you two will sit down together and come up with a plan uh, for your shared resources. Now, Mercury moves into Gemini on the 29th. Now, when Mercury is in Gemini, you will like talking about yourself, okay? So, for you, Mercury will be in Leo. Did I say Mercury? It's Mercury in Leo, okay? Mercury is going to be in Gemini until the 12th, and then it moves into Cancer on the 12th, and it will be there until the 29th and then on the 29th it moves into leo so when mercury is in leo you will love talking about yourself okay and for you it falls in your house nine house nine is all about long distance journeys so you'll be talking about telling people where you've been uh, where you've traveled things of that nature because we all know sagittarius is like the traveler of the zodiac okay um also, you might find yourself um, talking about the educational experience you have because House 9 also deals with uh, higher education. It deals with people of, dealing with people of, um, from foreign cultures. So you'll be talking about the experience you had overseas and, you know, telling people about, you know, the cultures of other, um, other countries, things of that nature. Remember, when Mercury is in Leo, you will like talking about yourself, okay? So, in the area that the things that House 9 deals with, you will find yourself talking about yourself in relation to those topics. Let's move on to Venus because Venus will be in Cancer until the 13th of the month. Now, when Venus is in Cancer, you find yourself... Um, being more affectionate, you find yourself forming an emotional bond, things of that nature. For you, Venus will be in Cancer in your house eight. Okay, so re remember, house eight is related to other people's money, it's related to shared resources, it's even related to transformation. So you will find yourself being more affectionate um, and forming an emotional bond surrounding those topics as far as um, sharing your resources with your partner. So that's really great. Now, Venus moves into Leo on the 13th. And when Venus is in Leo, you like splurging, you would like shopping, you will be generous, generous with your money. Let's see where it falls for you. 
for you, Venus in Leo falls in your ninth house. So don't be surprised if you find yourself splurging on a long distance journey, maybe an overseas trip or some type of vacation. Don't be surprised if you find yourself splurging on that. Okay. Okay. Also, when Venus is in Leo, you do find yourself wanting to be admired in the area of where the where the planet is falling. So for you in house nine, you might want to be admired for your travels, for your overseas travel. You might want to be admired for your knowledge of the law or your knowledge of philosophy, things of that nature. Let's keep moving on. Let's look at Mars. Mars will be in Aquarius all month long. Now, when Mars is in Aquarius, it's all about trying to find different ways to do things, okay? And for you, Sagittarius, Mars falls in your third house of communication. Now, your third house mainly deals with communication, but it can also deal with short distance travel. It can deal with siblings. It can deal with your uh, close neighbors, things of that nature. So for you this month, you might be trying to find new ways to um, travel short distances. You might be trying to find new ways to communicate with people. So you might be thinking about buying a, you know, a different cell phone or you might start getting into, um, if you're not you know, too, too into technology, you might suddenly find yourself wanting to get on social media, things of that nature. So you're, you're trying to find different ways to do things in relation to communication or it could relate to a sibling. Maybe you're trying to find a new way to um, communicate with your sibling, you know, or your neighbor, things of that nature. So that's just something to keep in mind for this month. Mars will be in Aquarius all month. And also... Whatever you're thinking about taking on a new, uh, trying to find a new way to do something, you need to do it before Mars goes retrograde on June 26th. Mars will be retrograde from June 26th through August 26th. And during that time, Mars will not feel like doing anything. It will not feel like initiating anything. Um, so whatever you are trying to find a new way to do, you need to do it before Mars goes retrograde. Now, let's look at Uranus or Uranus, same planet. Okay, for you, Uranus is in your house six, which is your daily routine. It's also your health and your vitality. So what is going on with Uranus is that wherever Uranus is in your chart, it wants you to make changes in that area. And if you don't make the changes, Uranus will make them for you and it won't be a pretty sight. It's usually not a pretty sight, okay? Remember, Uranus is a big planet, okay? A lot of people think Uranus is a small planet, but it is huge, okay? We have Jupiter is the largest planet. Saturn is the second largest planet. Third is Uranus. And then after Uranus comes Earth, okay? So... Uranus wants you to make a change in your daily life, Sagittarius, whether it's your health um, or whether it's your daily routine. Uranus wants to see you make a change between now and the year 2026 because it will be in your house six um, until the year 2026. So between now and the year 2026, you need to make a change to your daily routine. You need to make a change to your health. If you know you're not eating healthily, you need to make that change. Remember, if you don't make it, Uranus will make it for you. Okay, let's look at another thing that's going on. We have a great aspect. We have Jupiter trying Neptune. Whenever planets trying one another, they're giving you extra luck in the area of your chart where they fall. So let's see where they fall in your chart. Okay, you have Jupiter in your 12th house, which deals with um, subconscious topics. It deals with manifesting your dreams, um, places of isolation, such as hospitals, jails. And you have Neptune in your house four. And remember, house four is dealing with your home and family life. So in those two areas, you will find that you have a, you have a boost of luck. 
in those areas. So look for um, a lot of lucky situations to go on around your house. One example I can give is let's say you've been waiting for a while to uh, renovate your house. Uh, during this transit, you very well might be lucky and just all of a sudden, you know, the house is renovated, you know. You'll finally get a you'll finally find the contractor who you like to work with and they'll just come and renovate the house, do the you know, do the renovations that you want to see made. Now being let's say another example I can give is let's say you've been trying to find a space in your house to meditate. Well, this transit will make something like that happen because house four is related to the home and family, house twelve is related to the subconscious mind. So just look out for some luck to happen to you in those areas, Sagittarius. So that's really great for you. That's something to look forward to. Now, the sun will move into Cancer on June 21st. So as of June 21st, we can start telling our Cancer friends happy birthday. It's going to be their birthday season. Now, the full moon will be in Capricorn on June 28th. That's for some of you people who like to do your full moon rituals or some people who plant according to the full moon. I know I'm a gardener. I like to plant vegetables every year. And um, that's one thing that got me into the cycles of the moon because I, did, I have noticed over the years that when you plant according to the moon, your garden does really well, exceptionally well. I mean, you will be surprised. There's times... There's different uh, phases of the moon that are best for you to plant. There's other phases that are best for you to pull up weeds. There's other phases that are best for you to water. Things of that nature. And also, according to the moon, I mean, it's, it's, there are different things that are better for you to plant versus other things. So that's one thing that got me into... Um, the cycles of the moon. I actually got into the cycles of the moon and then I gradually moved into astrology. It's all very amazing to me. So let's look at the new moon. Let's see what you need to concentrate on at the new moon. The new moon will be in Gemini on June 13th. Now, according to where, I mean, it's deeper than this, but according to where it falls in your chart, that would be what you need to concentrate on at the new moon. But because I don't have your individual birth chart in front of me right now, I'm just going to pull an oracle card for every Sagittarius to see what you need to concentrate on at the new moon. So let's take a look. I'm going to give it one more shuffle. Okay. What does it say? Okay, so at this new moon in Gemini, you need to concentrate on being the authority. I'm just looking at your bird chart right now. Okay. All right. So this is just basically saying at this new moon, this is a great time to look at your life and think about, let's see, where is your Pluto? And, oh, yeah. You have Pluto and Saturn in your house too. And Pluto is all about um, kind of like a death and a rebirth. So right now you need to concentrate on just putting everything in order in your life. Remember, you are the authority of your life. So it's up to you to get things together for yourself. So at this new moon in uh, Gemini, this is what you need to concentrate on. Just concentrate on, just take a look at every area of your life and think to yourself, is it the way I want it to be? And if it's not, you are the authority to change it, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, you can contact me for a reading, whether it's for a birth chart interpretation or whether it's for a tarot reading or an oracle reading. You can contact me. I have my email address and my um website um, address listed in the description box below and please like this video share the video um, subscribe to the channel I greatly appreciate it now until next month Sagittarius have a great month